Um, real quick story, when I started grad school, my first class, it was this huge room, giant room, there were like 100 and whatever people in there. I get in there and I sit down, and the instructor comes in, uh, and he says, uh, okay, there's no stupid questions, only stupid people that don't ask questions. So I was like, okay, that's a little bit, but I get your idea, that's great. And then about half an hour after that, somebody asked a question, and he's like, oh my God, so stupid, I just said, and I was like, okay, crap. So, uh, never stupid question, well, you guys can take this as a challenge. Um, that question is not stupid. Uh, oh, see if mystery markers work. Oh, no way. So if so, we have these. Oh, you're not going to work too well. Uh, we have these formulas. Let's see. X plus or minus Z standard deviation. Yeah. In each one of these, the, the number that would come after the plus or minus is the error. And again, uh, would anybody agree with the fact that math people seem to have trouble naming things sometimes? <laughs> that makes sense. But here, this makes complete sense. We think it's this, give or take. Okay, give or take, that, that should be the error. That's how much we think we're off by. So we actually named it well this time. So this piece is the error, right? So that's why I told you guys when you're calculating a confidence interval, calculate the error and then add subtract. Don't do it all at once because a lot of problems ask for the error bound, right? And, and I didn't call it error bound, I just called it error, but error bound is that. It's not like the bounds of where we think things are. So it's the error bound, okay? Like it, sort of like when we did Histograms, so we made class boundaries, so the error bounds, right? Okay. Is that is that right? Which one are you talking about? Which uh, problem from the homework? Yeah, I'm doing the 97. I think I told you yesterday that my dad helped me. I still can't figure it out. Uh, let's see, 97. Yeah, yeah, so when you create the confidence interval, you're going to calculate this piece, whichever formula you're using. That's the error bound. So the funny thing is, the reason the book sort of asks questions out of order, because that's the first thing we would calculate, is the error bound. So why do they make that the last question they ask? Because this book is, ba is based on using the calculator way too much. So the calculator just spit out the confidence interval and then you would have to kind of sit there and figure out what the error must have been. So that's why it's kind of like, it's kind of backwards, but yeah. Does that make sense? So it's a little bit misleading why they ask it last, right? Is that, is that better? So if, if you, is, is the issue that you don't know what to put yeah, for the here? Z. Huh? Oh, uh, let's see. So this was 97? Yeah. So we do know sigma. So we are going to use z-scores. 90% confidence interval. There's two ways you can get that z-score. So let me say all this again. If I ask you for a 90% confidence interval, can somebody tell me one way I can get that z-score for 90%? You find the uh, z-score for 95%. Use that one and it's... Okay, uh, no. So if I need the z-score for a 90% confidence interval, give me one way I can find that. Yeah. Find the area closest to 10. Uh, sort of, sort of. Um, not quite 10 because if I have a 90% confidence interval and I want to find, there's two z-scores I need, right? How do I find this one? What area is below this one? Not 10%. Yeah, point oh five. So I could, so there's three ways actually. What was that? <laughs> Sorry. 
Everybody else heard that, right? Or was that just? I'm like, which med did it not take this morning? Okay. <laughs> was that with somebody's phone or something? I was like, yeah. there's wind chimes. Okay, okay. Um, I love it. This morning's been really strange. Uh, so there's three ways. This, this way I wasn't even thinking about, but you could do it the old fashioned way and just look directly in the z-score chart, figure out the area in one of the tails, and then get the z-score that way. You could use the little baby chart. Remember, little baby chart on the z-score chart? It's doing confidence levels. It only does 90, 95, 99, but they're right there. And what's the third way? The more recent way. T-score. T-score chart. This would be alpha's 0.10, two tails, go all the way to the bottom, z-score. Um, I, I think my method still works though. I, I'm just a little confused because I, you know, you don't not Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, right. so you meant find the z-score. Okay, so you would have done this, sorry, Sean, you're right. Right. That's what you meant, okay. Yeah. But you said 95% confidence, which oh, is not bad. that. Bad. That's why I was right. thrown off. Okay. So that if you mean. find a z-score that's got 95% below it, that's right. the same thing. Yeah. Yes. So then we lose 1.645. Uh, <laughs> yes. Kick ass. All right. I'm going to try not to mention how worried I am about you guys. Are so wait, wait, wait. What's up with this guy? He's always like, okay. Um, anything else about the quiz or homework stuff? Yes? Do we have a quiz next week? Uh, I don't know. I hadn't really sat down and think about it. So we have a test. Today's going to be review day for the test that's happening Monday. Then we have uh, the last bit of new material to go over Tuesday and Wednesday. And then Wednesday is going to include uh, re uh, final exam review. Right? In fact, I'm going to try to make most of Wednesday be final exam review. Does that make sense? So I don't think there's time for another quiz, so I'm, I'm sorry. Now, the, the funny thing is, you think I'm joking about that, but as a student, you need to start to realize you want more grades. Right? I had a class where the only grade was the oral final examination. That was the only grade. Right? Or at least it's the only thing he graded. He, he collected all the stuff, and at the end of the class, he said, There's a big box. Go in there and find your stuff. And he hadn't looked at it at all. And then he put us each in a room, gave us a problem, and then we had to work it. And then he would come back and say, Explain it to me. Oh. This is quantum mechanics, by the way. So, uh, that was a little, yeah. So you, you, you want more grades. So I feel bad that I only gave you four quizzes. That's my fault. Uh, but that's the way it is. Okay. So no more quizzes. We have a test and a final happening next week. Okay. Anything else from homework or the quiz or logistical questions? Did, did I get your quiz back? Uh, oh, you, you did corrections, right? I haven't looked at that. I just realized. I thought for a minute that you had forgotten to take it, and I was like, oh, wait, she corrected it. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. All right, so, okay. All right, so I have the answer key for the practice test. I'll give you that here in a bit. Uh, I want to first do this. This. Do this so I don't accidentally broadcast everybody's grades. Um, So yesterday we did this worksheet. Sorry, little dude. Let me see if I can turn down your, there you go. So we did this, we looked at this yesterday. Mike. Um, we're gonna do the other side. So 
Let me know if you don't have this handout. This one here. So we talked about the idea, we talked about the concepts, we talked about what's really neat. Let me see if you guys, what did I say? Oh, sorry. Here. Whenever I gave us a new distribution of data, what were the two most important things to know? Standard deviation. Yeah, where the middle is, the mean, right? And the standard deviation, how spread out it was. This now, this is data, correct? But this is the data, let, let's look at the back real quick. So here's one set of data here. So this would be if a class actually did this experiment, um, right, the number of beers somebody drank, so you guys can pick who that would be if you're up there, uh, or if you're zero, I'm sorry, I didn't jump. And then the grades the next day on the test, right? Um, how many variables are there? Not data points. How many variables are there? Two. Hey, it's our first example of a two variable situation, right? You guys all look at that, it's ground shape. Would you ever want to sort? Like, this is sorted just because I wanted to make it easier just to kind of look at, but would you ever want to sort the two lists? Because what is this specifically? referring to this data here the person, person it's referring to a person so if I sorted each list I'm tearing people apart right I know I always go to the to extreme okay you guys all with me so do not sort the data does not have to be in order I just happen to put this in order just to make it easier on me to make shit up uh, okay all right I like it because obviously this is not an experiment Although, I might have inadvertently done this experiment a few times. Okay. Um, so let's do this. Very first thing, just to get us going. Go ahead, uh, if you need a calculator, come up and borrow one. Uh, if you have a calculator, start putting the beers, the number of beers in L1 and the grades in L2. Batteries should be good, but check. Make sure the battery's good. Say again? Oh yeah, uh, do I, that's a good question. Is this the one I wrote, yeah, this is the one I wrote on. Uh, how do I run out of sheets that are printed more than I need of? Um, I can just do it from there. Yeah, I'm sorry. Here, you, here. Uh, what do you need for that? No, I don't, watch this. Well, if I do it right, that would be all cool. Okay. Well, I can also do that. That's true. Okay, let's see. I'll catch up to you guys. Do, 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 do. Wish I could copy and paste, but not quite. Okay. Um, while I'm doing this, just looking at the data, do you think it would have a positive or a negative R value? Negative. Why do you say that? Because as the number of beers increase, uh, the grade seems to decrease. I like it. Roughly, right? Not yeah. perfectly. Yeah, there's a, a lot of. In fact, that. it's not really good at all. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll show you. I'll show you. I tried it. Well, I'll show you what I did. Uh, so let me keep going. So, does everybody have the data in their calculator now? Besides me? 
I'll take this against. Um, the first thing we need to be able to do is to just construct a um, scatter plot. And a scatter plot is just plotting the points. So it's kind of like the pictures that are on the front of that handout. The pictures, the all the little dots, right? Okay. Um, this is a four. Okay, let's see. I think that looks good. What really sucks, and just to give you a little bit of a, a help, as you're putting data in, stop somewhere and go, don't hit that button actually. Stop somewhere and say, okay, next to the two, there's supposed to be an 82. You understand what I'm saying? Because it really sucks if you have like 30 data points and you miss one and you get to the end and there's like an empty spot and you're like, oh shit, <laughs> right? So just as you're putting the data in, make sure the number you're putting in is next to the number it's supposed to be next to. Does that make? Just be nice to yourself is the, is the short version of that. Uh, I think I got everything put in there correctly. So. This is a graphing calculator. So it's, it's one of its main functions is to graph stuff. That's crazy. Um, the top row of buttons, let me make this a little bigger. Where's the, make it bigger. I think it's this guy. There you go, buddy. Okay. Um, this top row is all about graphing stuff. I mean, there's a button that says graph. It's crazy. If I wanted to graph like an algebraic y equals x squared minus 4 x plus 3 or something, I would hit the y equals button and put that stuff in, right? Look right above y equals. That seems very useful to us, right? But right below, above y equals is stat plot. So let's select that thing. So I'm going to hit second, y equals. And you get this really weird list. Anybody have any of these that say on? Go ahead and hit, everybody hit number four, just to make sure. Hit four, enter. And then go back, second, y equals. So everybody, all of them should be off now. I love it. Okay. So let's select, let's hit enter on number one. Everybody select number one. Now I want to I wanna point out a few things. Um, what does this look like? What does this look like? Holy shit. All right. So, you know, yeah, I'm going to go do that. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm me. I'm, I'm evil. So I make you guys do it by hand. It's a little weird the way you have to feed the calculator your information and get it to create something the way you want it to. So it's a little bit, it's like, why do all that crap when it's better just to do it by hand? Uh, but it can create box and whisker, it can create histograms, it can do other weird shit. That one's called an ogive, blah, 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 who cares. So let's first thing, turn this sucker on. So just high, hover over on and hit enter. We want to make a scatter plot. It's this first dude. So make sure that's highlighted. If it isn't, just hover over and hit enter. Make sure the X's are in list one, the Y's are in list two, right? So right now our data lists is like an X, Y table from algebra. So I'm just gonna plot these points. And then you can pick what mark to put on the data points. So you can either be a square, I'm obviously gonna be a square. I teach math. Uh, you can be positive about things. You can be a big speck of dust or you can be a small speck of dust in the universe. So. You can pick your own. And then for, for some of us, we can pick what color we want it to be. So let's see. I don't know what you guys think. I'm going to make it navy. Okay. Now, so again, see if you have an older calculator, you don't get to pick the color too bad. Um, if I hit graph right now, I get this, which is not what I expected, correct? I want to see some freaking dots, calculator. What the shit? Everybody hit graph. Does anybody get an error message? Let me know. If you hit the graph button, is everybody with me so far? No error messages? Okay, because it depends on what else somebody put into the calculator. It could be some error messages. Um, okay. In fact, real quick, hit the Y equals button just by itself and make sure this is all empty. Hit clear if something's not empty. 
So here's the problem. Um, the, the graphing calculator is set to negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10. That's what it's normally set to. And you can change the window and all this stuff. The stupid calculator costs enough money. It should be able to go find the data itself. And it will do that. There's a really cool button, zoom, right in the middle of the top, zoom. Hit the zoom button. Zoom box is my personal favorite because it's sort of like CSI Enhance. You can make a little box around a graph piece and then zoom in on it. It's kind of, if the graph is going crazy, you can zoom in and see what the hell it's doing, right? We're not gonna do that here. You can see the one I want on my screen. Which one seems to be applicable for us? Zoom stat, yeah, that last one. So, I don't know, it might not be nine for everybody, but make sure you can find zoom stat. You might have to scroll down. And if you do that, you should get this picture. Now, just to show you what I tried to do in my own feeble way is to, is to recreate this, right? I try to recreate this. Let's see how I did. What do you guys think? Did I do okay? I think you did perfectly. I did okay. I did okay. I'm not going to say perfect. Anyway, okay. So, obviously, this picture I just did on paint because I am a, 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 an art wizard on the computer. I just did paint, and I just put dots, blah, 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 just to make a point, right? So then when I try to go, okay, let me make up some data, I had to kind of create some scales and try to, anyway, all that doesn't matter. So let's look at this. So this is the same picture, and we already know, if I look at this, this is even a little less easy to see. Doesn't it look like it's just basically everywhere? If I take out these two outliers, then it's much more evident that there is a slight downward trend. Is it a very strong downward trend? No. Hell no. The dots don't necessarily line up going down perfectly. Just a little bit. So let me say that again. All the data points, their dots do not appear to be lockstep going down over time. Just a little bit. So should R be closer to negative one, zero, or one? Who remembers? What should R be closer to? Negative one, zero, or one? Zero. Should be closer to zero. What should it be between? Negative one and zero, or zero and one? Zero. Negative one and zero because this is a negative slope. So R does two things. If it's negative, the slope would be negative. It's positive, the slope is positive, but primarily it tells me the strength of the correlation. How strongly correlated. What does that mean visually? Sweet, you got it? Finally. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, yeah, Aiden's got a different kind of calculator, so kudos to you if you can figure anything out on that thing. Um, visually, what was I just saying? Darn it. Strength. Strength, strength thank you. Um, the strength of it means how close do the data points get to the line that, that kind of averages where they are. This one, if I kind of just eyeball a line, the data points are kind of far away. R's values of negative one, zero, and one don't sound like a standard deviation, but R is sort of a two-dimensional standard deviation. It just has negative and positive possibilities because that represents negative or positive slope. Okay, everybody, okay. So what are the two things? So again, what did I say earlier? Whenever I gave us a new distribution, I wanna know what the center is and what the spread is. So for this kind of data, that represents the line of best fit. So we, know, we wanna know what the equation of the line of best fit is, and then we wanna know how spread out is, which in this case is represented by R. Can anybody tell me what's the equation of a line? Mx plus b, right? That's one thing you're all like, yeah, remember that shit. Because a lot of the other stuff is weird. But mx plus b, you can kind of hang your hand on. Um, so let me do this. Right now, we want to make the calculator calculate, for example, that one formula I showed you was for r. Do you remember the formula I showed you in the book? This disgusting, huge formula? Oh, yeah. If you don't remember, great. Um, it's okay. So I'm, I want the calculator to calculate something based on the statistical data I put in, which means I'm gonna go to stat, calc. It makes sense. I wanna calculate something based on the statistical data, so I'm gonna go to stat, calc, 
And which one of those, the funny thing is there's two of them, which is really hilarious to me. But what is the first one that looks like it's going to give us what we need? Yeah, this is actually linear regression. Yeah. Linear regression. And what that means is if there is a correlation, as I take a larger and larger sample, the data points should kind of regress towards a line. That's where we get the linear regression. Right? Okay, okay. Do you see how there's two of these? Which is just forever going to be hilarious to me. What's the slope in this one? M, so M is zero. Good. So in mathematics, it's M. The statisticians were like, we're not math people. We're going to use a different letter, whatever. So for some reason, A. What's the slope down here? B. So whatever answer this gives us, A and B are just going to be reversed. They're the same stupid thing. It's absolutely hilarious. So I'm pretty much always going to use this one because it's more like MX plus B, correct? OK. So let's go ahead and click that, number four. Now some of you guys, if you have an older calculator, it's just gonna say lid reg, I think. Yeah. Anybody not have all that stuff show up? And it just says lid reg? Yeah, well, it does include the X plus B right there. No, it just says lid reg, right? Or whatever it says, okay. So it defaults to list one, list two. You can just hit enter. The rest of us, we gotta make sure it's list one, list two, no freaky list. Don't worry about this at the moment. Yes? You good, Sal? Huh? You, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were raising your hand. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. So list one is my X's. List two is my Y's. No freaky list. Don't worry about this for the moment. Calculate. Okay. Now, I like that this happened. Anybody get more information than I did? Uh, what else did you get, Mike? Square and yeah, and then I just say I want to know the center. So I got the center. I got the line of best fit. What's the slope of the line of best fit? Negative two point five. Yeah, negative two point five. And the and the y intercept is a nine point eight. Okay. Now, didn't we also are we also supposed to get an idea of the spread, which for this kind of data is r? Anybody else in the same boat as me? That's all you got, right? So everybody's like, no, oh, Michael, whatever, man. You must have got a better calculator. No, so here's the thing. This is so, this will be the second really hilarious thing to me. There's a button you can press that will cause a few calculations to give you more information. And the reason it has an option to turn it off is because the older versions of the calculator, it would tax their processors too much, <laughs> right? Nowadays, why they just don't make it always on, I don't know, right? So you only have to do this once if you have your own calculator. Do this with me. Hit second, zero. This is a catalog of everything this calculator can do. Just to show you, what do you think that first thing is referencing? Upper load. No, this is a workout period. No, this is, yeah, this is absolute value, right? So if I hit that one and I put negative four, I would, it would tell me the answer is four, right? It's the absolute value. So we don't need that. What, what we want to do, I want to get to the, um, so A, B, C, D, I want to get to the D part. Do you see how there's a D right there above X to the negative one? See right there? So just hit this button and it should jump down to the D section. You only have to do this once if you have your own calculator. So it'll actually tell you the day of the week. And you can, you can put in there like year and whatever. I can't remember, it doesn't matter, who cares. So if you go blah, 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 scroll down until you get to what's called diagnostic on. Again, I love technology day, it's fantastic. Thankfully, you only have to do this once if you have your own copy. So hit enter, enter. And like almost everything else is very anticlimactic. But now, if you go back in, Everybody with me so far? Did I lose anybody? Stat, calc, number four. And now it's going to tell me everything. Okay. So back in the day when, I'm sorry, I just remember when the internet first came out, which is funny for you guys to hear. 
uh, you would sit down at a computer, you type in a website, and then you walk away. You go, okay, I'll come back. And you go make dinner, and then you come back in. Oh, it's halfway done, okay. <laughs> that was the speed of our, and that was just amazing. It was like, holy shit. Um, sorry. Uh, this calculator is stupid fast. It doesn't need help. Um, so look at the R. Is it, close to, is it closer to zero? Yes, and is it negative? Yes, so, so it matches up. There seemed to be a slight downward trend, especially if you took those two outliers out, but it was barely there. Zero means no correlation. So whatever's there, it's negative, but it's really slight. That's exactly what this says. Everybody with me? Yes? And this doesn't tell you the uh, steepness of the slope, does it? No. Uh, uh, there are some mathematical manipulations you could do to R to make it tell you what the slope is exactly. But again, I'm not going to make us do that. Okay. So let's do this. Let's go back to the sheet. Hey, could you put down here, just so we can reference it. Right here, notice this. I will always tell you this. What value do we need to show correlation? So what did we actually get for R? Negative 0.339, blah, 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 right? Yeah, that's what I just said, okay, okay. Um, did we show evidence that there even is correlation? I need R to be less than negative 5.3, uh, 0.532, did we get there? No. Does that sort of sound like a hypothesis test? So I could make a problem where I have a full-fledged hypothesis test. I won't. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you what you need, and then you can see if you got there. So did we even find evidence that there actually is a correlation in the population? No. We didn't. You guys kind of with me? There could be, a, but we haven't found evidence. We didn't find enough evidence. It's exactly like a hypothesis test, but you don't have to worry about all that. You just have to see if it is. So is this a strong correlation? What kind of correlation? There is no correlation, right? That would be how to answer this question. Is this a strong correlation? What kind of no? No, let me be more specific, linear correlation. I will always just tell you this. You with me? I will always just tell you what R is necessary. What do you think makes it easier to pass? Well, look at this. Why is this R smaller than that R? Absolute value wise, right? Because this sample is bigger. So if I make my sample bigger and bigger and bigger, the criteria for showing correlation gets smaller and smaller. It gets easier. Of course it does, because then we're more sure about what we're seeing. Okay. All right. Um, the line of best fit. Now let's kind of finish this out, even though we already know this kind of sucks. What was it again? Negative two point. Do one more de decimal. Two point five four. Uh, plus eighty nine, right? Point something. Is that right? What was the B? Oh, eighty nine point eight three. Eight three. Okay. All right, so everybody write that down on your piece of paper. You're going to need it right now. All right. Maybe I'll post this. Okay. Oh, shit. What have I done? What have you done, Jeff? Everything else is down there. Don't computer explain to me. All right, we haven't even talked about this next question yet, but you should have a feel for this. If you use the line of best fit to make a prediction, what does that mean? What do I want to be able to do? I want to be able to say, what if I drank um, three and a half beers? What does it look like my grade is going to be? Is everybody with me? If I see there's a correlation between the number of eggs somebody eats and the, and the, the length of life, wouldn't you be going, well, if I eat five eggs a day, what does that do to my longevity? What is that, right? Isn't that what you would want to know? Okay. Uh, but would we trust this line? 
would you trust this line to make accurate predictions based on what we saw? Did we even find a correlation? Did we find evidence for an actual correlation? No. So what do you think? Would you trust the line to make predictions? No. I can't trust the line to make predictions. Okay. Nope. Okay. And so now go back into your lists. Clear list one, clear list two, and we're going to put these in. So now this is the data for our study versus grade maybe. Poet who didn't realize it. No job. You just have there you go, buddy. Alright, everybody's favorite part is verification. Now this one, as you just scan the data with your eyeballs, you might be able to tell that I chose to represent the stronger correlation example in this one. What happened, let's just try to do this. All right, so if, if I hit graph right now, I get this. I see one data point, right? So what step do I need to do? Anytime I put new data in, I have to tell the calculator to go find it. How did we do that again? Oh, zoom. Zoom, stat. So now I found it. Maybe this is not, yeah, this is still the, the, yeah, this is stronger than the one we just did, but I think it's the, let's see what it is. No, yeah, I think it's, did I do that one? No, I don't know what the hell I did. I just made this shit up. All right, we just made this shit up. Okay. So this one, is it a much clearer trend? Yes. Visually, yes. Is it still, is it strong? No. No, but it's much clearer. So would you say R would be like 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.7? What would your guess be? 0 0.25. 0 0.25. Anybody else have a different guess? Is this a stronger correlation than the one we just did? The older way, right? You can tell visually. You can just totally tell it's, it's stronger. The whole, like everybody, they're not going in a straight line, but they're all going up, right? Negative point three something. Oh, so definitely bigger than that. Then. So, so it should be bigger than that. So, so like point five, point 0.5 something maybe, right? Yeah. And again, you don't have to be able to do that, right? You're like, dude, I just learned about this shit yesterday, and now you want me to eyeball it? No, all right, I understand. I just want to try to lay out the idea. So if I get an answer of like point oh seven, I know I did something wrong because, you know, look at that. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's calculate this. Stat, calc, number four. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's 
So look at R. 0.738, right? Why is that good? Why is that a good, strong, a decently strong? I wouldn't say it's strong, but. It's like 74% close. Oh, I see. You're trying to interpret. It's not quite mean that, but I, I like the, the, the attempt. It's sort of not quite what it means, but yeah. It's definitely closer to one. That's the key part, right? Here's what's interesting. Real quick, let me ask you guys. Um, can somebody tell me, somebody give me one thing that could affect the grade you make on a test you take? What's one thing that could affect that? How long you study. How long you study. Somebody else give me another thing. Practice. Sleep, the amount of sleep you got. Yeah, the amount of practice you got, right? And anything else? The amount of days you went to class, kick ass. She's called a few people out. No, you know, sorry. Anybody else? No, how, how about how, how much of a dick your teacher is, right? Does your teacher do a lot of trick questions? I hope you don't think I do, all right? How you're feeling that day? What you ate for breakfast? I mean, so, couldn't this list keep going? How many variables then could affect the performance on a test? A lot. How many are we able to study at a time with this? We're really only able to study one variable's effect on the variable test grade, correct? All right, all right. I love it. I love you guys. So I will tell you this. Um, R squared tells you what it seems the percentage effect the variable you're looking at has on the other variable. So it seems about 54% of the change in grades is explained by the difference in, what was this one, hour studied? You guys semi with me? So that's why I was kind of like, you're, you're so close with that. So what, what's the other 46%? Well, again, it, it could be beers drank the night before. It could be the number, amount of sleep you get. It could be whatever, right? Okay, okay. I'm not gonna test you on that. I just wanna let you know. That's why, that's why it tells me R squared. You could be like, why the hell does it tell me R squared? So let's do this. Let's actually graph this thing. Uh, let's write this down. 0. 0.657. Uh oh, are we okay about there? R was um, 0. 0.738, is that right? And let's see why, oh, is this a strong correlation? Decently strong, yeah. By the way, on a test or something, I would make it really obvious. It would, it's either gonna be like 0.9, or it's gonna be, in this case, if, if R would have been 0.47, you with me? Is that evidence of correlation? Yes. Is it strong? No. No, it just barely showed correlation, it would be a weak, positive correlation. If R was 0 0.98, there that's a strong positive correlation, right? If R is one, that is a perfect positive correlation, right? Which really never happens. Okay, you guys with me? So I'm not gonna make you try to become uh, like the people that describe wine. I love it, because to me, wine is just wine, right? But you drink wine, it's got hints of, of uh, lavender and, and it, Tastes like it was sitting next to an open barrel. No, I don't know what the hell shit. So I, I don't want you to go, it's kind of sort of strong on every other Tuesday. No, so it's either gonna be like strong or it's gonna be eek. Just so you don't have to worry about what adjective to use. Here, I would say decently strong, right? Not really strong, but it's decently strong. What kind of correlation is it? What do I mean by that? I mean, is it positive or negative? Positive, positive, yeah, linear correlation. Now, real quick thing about linear. Um, if I had, let's see if I get this. Um, AC usage over time could look something like this. Yes? Like, like uh, let me make this more data-like. I, I just gave away the whole game there, but too bad. All right, here's AC usage over time, right, from January to December. 
but they actually have a peak in the middle. I don't care. So generated a summer, right? Is that a linear correlation? No. No. So if I do linear correlation test on this, R will be close to zero. Do, is there a correlation? Yes. yes, but it's just quadratic. It's parabolic, right? So just, to, and again, this is just a side note, side note. We're not gonna suddenly do parabolic, but I just wanna show you, if you go to stat calc, do you see how down here it's got quadratic? Regression, it's also got cubic, and it's got quartic regression. It's got natural logarithmic regression. Okay, okay, so the only thing we're gonna do here is linear, Are you with me? But just wanna open the idea that there could be all kinds of shapes that I want to fit to, right? Uh, okay, okay. Uh, let's see where it was. Oh, so we've got this line written down, do we? Not quite yet, Jeff. Good job, buddy. Somebody read off the line equation for me, if you could. Wait, wait, sorry, sorry. Zero point, is it? Yeah, zero point six six plus seventy point nine seven. Seventy point nine seven, is that right? So 0.66x, okay. So now go to your calculator, hit y equals. You put in there 0.66, and here's your x button right here. 0.66x plus, I already forgot what it was, 70.97. And now hit graph. Does that look to be, oh shit. Does that look to be doing what it's supposed to be doing? Yes. Because what is it supposed to be doing? It's supposed to be graphically averaging where all the points seem to be. Technically what it does is it minimizes the total squared distance from every data point to that line. So that's kind of like what the math would look like and that's why the equations are just so beautiful. Or some might say disgusting. I don't know. Okay. I like it. So it should be really obvious. If you plot the line and it's freaking here, you should know, okay, that's obviously wrong. Maybe you put the plus y-intercept in wrong. If I make the b bigger, doesn't that make that line go up? Right? If I make where it's the y-axis bigger, doesn't that make the whole line just go up? So that, that's very often it's just somebody mistyped. But you should really see. So here's what's going to happen. On the final exam, there will be a problem. You will have to put it in there. You'll have to come up to me at my desk and you'll have to show me this picture in your calculator, right? You guys all with me? So you're gonna have to know how to do this process on your calculator, okay, okay. Um, what about this? There's another question on here. So if you use the line of, there's two more questions. If you use the line of best fit to make a prediction, would you trust that prediction? Yes. Yes, totally. Because not only do we find correlation, it's it's actually decently strong. Even if it was weak, I would still trust it. It's better than just telling somebody the average, right? So up here for this one, my best guess for anybody is the average grade. That's my best guess for anybody because that's my best guess. Period. Here, the line improves my guess. I don't ask to guess the average. I can guess based on how many hours you study. I can trust the line. So, how would I predict the grade for someone who studied 11 hours? Totally. Yeah, I like that. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, what do you guys get when you put 11 in? Don't say anything. Go ahead and take a minute and figure out when you put 11 in. So if you do 0. 0.66 times 11 plus 70.97, so I'm just plugging 11 into the equation. I've already forgot what I said, 78.23? Yeah. Okay. Now let's see, does that make sense? Well, let's see. 
Look around here where 11 would be. In between 10 and, isn't there a couple 12s? So see how they're 75, 74, 82? So if you kind of average those, don't you get about 70, roughly? I mean, that's, the stronger, the closer R is to one or negative one, the more accurate our prediction should be. This is not like crazy close to one, correct? It's good, but it's not really good. So any approximation I make is not going to necessarily be that great, but it will be a lot better than just using the average, right? Okay. Okay, so how do you guys feel about this section? Normally, I would hope people would feel decent about it because it's nowhere near as conceptual as some of the other stuff. There are some concepts, but they're hopefully pretty straightforward. Okay. So, does everybody, let me not ask this question because I don't think I have any more. Oh, I do. Everybody have a practice test? I have one more. Okay. So let's do this. Unless there's any questions on what we just did. Oh, let me show you one more thing. One more thing. Um, you're like, yeah, dude, you run the show. Um, the calculator calculates it. So it should be able to tell me the answer to what we just did. So watch this real quick. You, you don't have to do this, but let me show you. If you do, see right up here where it says calc? So this whole first row is about graphing. So this is graphically calculating something. So if I do second trace, I can tell it to, uh, to calculate a value for x equals 11. 78.23. Yay! Yeah. Isn't it cool? Okay. Also, before I forget, I cannot use any linear correlation uh, line to make predictions for anything that's outside of the scope of my data. So if I wanted to know what if I study 30 hours, there's this, the, what we've done can't guarantee that the approximation holds. It only knows it's within that. So I can't estimate, I can't get an estimate for three hours, I can't get an estimate for 30 hours. I have to live within that. And why does that make sense? Because when you're a little kid, aren't you growing? Do you grow forever? <laughs> Does, don't you sort of do this? And then later you get to do this a little bit, right? You guys all with me? If everybody just kept going forever, then we'd all be these giants walking around. Yes? It'd be very different. Like, because the newbies would all be getting stampled by the old guys walking around. Okay, sorry. Yes? Does it depend on what we're talking about, though? Because in science, you would extrapolate from the data, right? Say one more time. You would extrapolate, and you would have to go outside the data. There's, there's no guarantee from this that the, that the linear equation we came up with works outside of the range of our data. It could. And again, this is stats one, so I always do surface level stuff, but if you get a little deeper, you could be in a certain situation where you know, biologically or theoretically, whatever, that it should hold even outside the data, so then you can use the equation then. In general, you can't say. It only exists within the data. So projections for stuff like the economy. Oh yeah. When it comes, is, is that just bad statistics then? No, it's it's just a misunderstanding of what stats can do. Okay. Um, anybody ever heard of the Fibonacci sequence? Yeah. What is it? It's like zero, one, one, two, three. Yeah. So it's one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen. So one plus one is two. One plus two is three. Two plus three is five. Five plus three is eight. So, real quick, uh, what's the size of a note card, little note card? Give me one of the sizes. Three by five. Three by five? Ooh, that's, in, that's the numbers in the Fibonacci sequence, right? What about five by eight? Four. Right. Note card. Huh? Three you got a note card. Yeah. There you go, there you go. Um, all right, I'm not gonna make this become a Fibonacci sequence lesson, I'm sorry, but Fibonacci sequence, you can study it. You can have a class just about Fibonacci sequence for an entire semester. Uh, there is a way to use a Fibonacci sequence to talk about when to buy or sell stocks. So a friend of mine, over the recession in 2000, when was it, six, seven, eight? 2008. 
he used the Fibonacci sequence idea to actually make money consistently throughout it. So it's, it's interesting. So, uh, yeah, so I'm not going to sell any huge out account cards and do that thing. So. I know, it's crazy. Um, okay, okay, okay. So let's do this. Uh, I'm gonna, well, let's make a formula sheet and then I'm gonna open it up to anything. This test, this next test, which is on Monday, is gonna be on chapter eight, nine, and 12. And I will have one bonus problem from section 10-2 for anybody who does the extra credit, right? But chapter 10 will not be on the test itself because I made it extra credit. Do I have? The key, I've got the key, yeah. I, I, I do, and I give it to you in a bit. Okay. Unless you have to leave, they have to leave and grab it. Um, so let's do this, let's make a formula sheet for this test. So it starts with um, confidence intervals, right? And then it goes into hypothesis testing and then ends up here. This section, no formulas. It's all calculator stuff, right? Uh, so obviously the ones I just erased are the big ones to start with. Yeah, you can just bring all your formula sheets with you. In fact, for the final, you can just bring all your formula sheets, right? You can have them on a piece of paper as big as that yellow one in the back. As long as you don't bother other people, I don't care. You don't have to put them on a Fibonacci approved note card. Or a grain of rice, hopefully, if you put it on a grain of rice. Um, so this is chapter eight stuff. I will put one more up here, but I want you to realize it's the same as this. I'm sorry, it's the same as this. Um, if I don't, if I, if I only know S, can I use these scores? No. I have to use the T scores. So these formulas though, these two are the same. T is the Z score. It's, it, it accomplishes the same thing. It's just a little bit bigger. S is an a, a estimate for sigma, right? Maybe? Whatever, Jeff. All right. So these are the same formula. I would use this if I ask you how many more people, blah, 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 and you have a T-score situation. You would just do the exact same formula, but instead of Z, you put T. Instead of sigma, you put S. Nothing amazing. Okay. Um, then for hypothesis testing, we've got this old thing here that we've been using for a while. You can put next to it that is so that's the same old formula we've been using for a while then we got this newbie that's the new one and then let's go ahead I'll go ahead and let's put this down too Oops. let's put this down the T star formula is the same it's sort of like this thing it's the same formula it's our data minus the middle divided by the spread. Everybody understands that's an S, yes? 
right? Somebody, it was x minus the mean divided by five is what they did on the test and, you know, just, I know I can't write well, but it's on you to make sure your formulas are correct. So that those are S's. So we had a discussion about why, if I have S, why I still have to do that because it's individual versus groups. That doesn't change based on which standard deviation we're talking about. Is that better? Okay. Uh, let me think. Is there anything else? I don't think so. You guys have any other formulas you want to be able to put up there? Okay. Oh, that's an idea. You have to know it. What is it for means n greater than 30? For percentages, n, p, n, q, both at least by. Right? You guys with me? You can't put that in your formula sheet because it's not a formula. It's an idea. But I am open. I'm always open to suggestions. So if there's a formula I forgot, let me know. Otherwise, this is all we can have. Just to reiterate, if you put anything else on this new formula sheet, you'll lose points. Right? Maybe, maybe. And I've had people like do their own little code. No, come on. Come on, no, no, come on. Come here. Like they write like zodiacs kind of thing. Yeah, thankfully not that. I'm like, oh my god, I cracked the case. No, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, but something sort of in that vein, yeah, some kind of nifty, which, you know, I'm like, well, that's pretty cool you made a code, but I'm going to take points off. Yeah. Um, and we're going to do section 10 for the Oh, yeah, 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 okay. So if you're interested in doing the bonus problem from chapter 10, you can put down uh, this bad boy here. Which again, really is just this with everything doubled. There's a little more to it, but again, we didn't have a ton of time to do it. But yeah. So if you are doing Section 10.2 extra credit uh, homework, uh, I will have one question on the test that's a bonus that involves this. Yeah. I'll have at least two other questions that don't, right? Just so you know, you still have a chance, even if you don't do tip two. All right, so now it's wide open. If you have any more suggestions on formulas, let me know. Um, otherwise, we can talk about whatever the hell you want to talk about. We do questions from the practice test, questions from homework, uh, example questions. Uh, oh, sure. So that is an example of this thing, right? Because on number one, we have to use a T-score. Um, so the, the, the way I know it's that formula is how many means N. So I know I want to focus on my formulas that are solved for N. So now it's just picking the right one. It's not a percentage problem. I know N, so it's gotta be this guy. So on 1A, did you figure out what the T-score was? Gotcha. So on 1A, you'll figure out what the T-score is. So just put that there. I give you the standard deviation. Yeah. And I tell you, on, on 1B, what is the error? What am I going to put in place of E? Oh, 0.5. I love it. Half an hour. 0.5. Kick ass. Now, it would have been really evil if I said 30 minutes. 
because you don't put 30 because the whole thing's about hours, right? So I'm not gonna do the extra layer of unit conversion. Are we not gonna do calculating p-value for the square? You totally, we could. Oh, I, the reason I crossed out on number three is because I changed that on my earlier practice test, it was not a T-score problem, and then I changed it to a T-score problem. And I told you guys, I would never make you do a p-value for a T-score because their T-chart is not detailed enough to get it. But it would be on the exam. Yes, totally. So look at number five real quick. What kind of question is number five? Percentage. But is it a, uh, a probability question? Is it a... Confidence interval. Hypothesis test. Uh, I love it. Now, on the practice test, I just did this for space, but on the test number three, I will have the five steps spelled out, correct? Number five, you still have to do the five steps, yes? And on number five, you can get the p value because what do we use for percentages? We use z or nothing for percentages, right? And we talked about why that's true. Bless you. Does that help at all? So like on number five, I want you to figure out the p-value. I want you to do the same five steps from number three. So in this case, you could actually get the p-value. Okay. What kind of problem is number six? That's a confidence interval. In fact, you got to do two confidence intervals for that one. Yeah. So I like that kind of problem, hint, 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 where I give you two sets of data, hint. What question do you know is going to be on this test for sure? Yeah, what does the z-score tell you? Someday I'll get more than like 70% of everybody to get it right. I think that's the highest percentage of rightness I've gotten ever. Um, normally it's under 50, which is, yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, so the S is the standard deviation of the sample? Good. Oh. Yeah, so S is the standard deviation of the individuals in the sample. S of X bar is the standard deviation between samples of individuals. Yeah. So this is uh, for individuals and this is for groups. That's why I still have to do that, yeah. Okay. Yes? No. Oh, okay. Sally just came up and stole it. Okay. I let her do it, though, so I, I can't really. So here, I'll give you guys some answers. So, as always, if you haven't even tried the practice test out, maybe don't even look at this. So again, you know, I'm not the kind of math teacher that's all. I never make a mistake. I, I, I'm averaging about a 97 on my answer keys. So if you see anything that looks like you got a different answer and you're not sure why, there's a greater than 0% chance it was my mistake, right? Uh, thankfully, it's close to zero, but you know, it's not perfectly zero. Um, let's see, did I? So number 7B, I, you know, there's really, I could have taken a picture of my calculator or whatever. So if you guys want to try out number seven right now, considering that's the brand new stuff, and you want to show me on your calculator what you get, it's not a bad idea, right? Because on the actual test and the final, you're going to have to be able to show me.
seems to creep it up in year two, so that's great. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if we get any rolling blackouts or something today. This is supposed to be stupid hot today. spritz my bed clothes and throw them in the freezer. So you do what you can when you're, you don't have enough money to buy a portable AC. It's not the right slope. Hit Y equals. Did you change the CPU? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Let me here. This is um, not necessary to do, but let me just show you. There's that one thing I kept skipping on the calculator. Um, when I do Jeff, this. Store, see right here, store. Now, real quick, were we able to get the line without using what I'm about to show you? Yes. You just say Y equals and put the damn thing in here. Just to show you, uh, if you go to this, store regression equation, I can then go to bars for variables, Y bars, function Y1, and it will store the this equation in Y1. All the decimal glory of it. You guys see what I'm saying? So again, do we need that? We don't need that shit. Is it there for you if you want it? Yeah. Right. Otherwise, you just manually type it in. Whoop de do. So what do you think? Does it look like it's in the right place? Yeah. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, you haven't put the Y equals in. Yeah, so I need to see the data and the line of us. Yeah. Oh, man. Questions? No? Hell. Yeah, those I know. You just write the answer? Yes. But some people like to write your questions, so I'm not going to, you know. Who has their hand up? Zoom nine. There we go. Yeah, so anytime you put new data in, hit zoom nine, because then it'll show you all the data points. Yeah.
So the book calls the best guess, our best guess. So our best guess mean is X bar. Our okay. best guess percentage is P hat. So okay. that sample mean or percentage, the book calls it the points estimate. Okay, so if it gave me the confidence error, I would find the mean of that. So the, the confidence, confidence interval, interval P hat or X bar is always right in the middle yeah. because it's constructed by adding and subtracting the same amount okay. to that middle. Yeah. And that middle is the point estimate, right? Yeah, P hat and X bar would be the middle and those are what the book calls point estimates. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So on the, while I do this, I, gotta, I try to give you real data. So one year I did the, even if you don't like sports, it doesn't matter, but I did the yards, uh, um, total offensive yards, my team, and then the percentage of games won to see if there was a correlation. It makes sense there should be. But then I asked if it was stronger for defense or offense, and that's an interesting question. Uh, and then I also did um, stuff with COVID, of course, and I did stuff with the election. Got in trouble for one of them. And it's the percentage of people that had a bachelor's versus the percentage that voted for a certain person, oh, wow. uh, which is exciting, yeah. In the past, it was much easier to not let my political leanings out. It's become harder uh, in recent years. But you know, I don't want you to have to suffer through my crap, and I don't want to suffer through your crap. So thankfully, nobody's coming with it. Yeah, yes. I just want to check the rest of this. Also, except um, we would trust the lion to make predictions. So. Okay. Yeah. So when I ask you what does this tell us about the line of best fit, you can either say that the data points be close if it's a strong R, or that we would trust the prediction the line makes. Or something. Yeah. Oh yeah, so we'll be a little different. Yeah, so I just rounded to one. So you're actually more correct. Yep. Yeah, so watch this. I didn't say the standard deviation was normal. I said the population standard deviation is normal. So the standard deviation that we know came from a sample. Sigma's unknown, S is the only thing we know. Yeah. So R, <clears throat> somebody remind me, R equal to one. Could 
could you draw an example of r equals 1? All right, so that you could do this. Actually, I would draw a line first and then just put dots on it. There's r equals 1. Perfect positive correlation. They are perfectly lined up. Is everybody with me? If I only give you two data, let me see who can answer this question, and I will eventually round out your, your question. If I only give you two data points, can anybody tell me what R is going to be? Why? Because any two data points make a line. So will those two data points lie on the same line perfectly? Yes. So any two data points R will be one. So that's way too small of a sample, obviously. So this would be one. The minute I, let's say I pull that data point there, now let's guess for what R is. 0 0.99. 0 0.99, yeah, right? The minute I start pulling data points away, then R goes 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, right? Because R is a measure of how tight the data points are to the line. So if R is zero, what does that mean? All over the so it's all over, this is measles, all over the damn place. There's no line I could draw at all. So then the question of how close is it to the line doesn't even make sense because there's no freaking line, right? And of course, R equal negative one is just that, but yeah. yeah. So, okay. so R measures how tight to the line the data points are. The closer it is to one or negative one, the tighter they are to the line, right? Zero, it's not even line, it's not even seem to be going somewhere. They're just all over the damn place. Is that better? Okay. okay. It's forever 10.03 or whatever in this classroom. What time is it?